My name is Zoran Allen. I'm a first year architecture student at LSU. I'm on LSU's rowing team and I like to do art and physical fitness. So this was made for Architecture 1001, uh, Section 2. The project is titled The Clone, where essentially you have to make uh, a full-size clone of yourself in a certain position. And uh, I chose this position specifically with the criteria that it has to be from an excerpt of a stage-bound performance. So I ended up uh, with a dance performance by a, a ballerino named Sergei uh, Polyunin, I believe it's pronounced. He's performing to Hosier's song, Take Me to Church. And it's an emotional performance, uh, both the song and the dance that he does. The idea behind it, titled A Beckoning for the Transcendent, is that you're coming from a kneeling position with your arm outstretched, and, and he does this in the, the dance, and then the idea is that I'm, I'm cloning that, and then standing upward slowly. So kind of coming from a darker place earlier in the dance to rising up and beckoning for the transcendent the help from God or, or whatever it may be that'll lead you forward and get you out of the dark times. It was tough to make, to be honest with you, but you know, you could either be in the stands or you could just be doing something on the stage, whatever it was, and I wanted to do something significant or meaningful. You know, basically the gesture is signifying hope despite personal demons or whatever your struggle might be, that you're reaching upward towards something to, to take you forward and, and uh, away from something dark. Hello, my name is Darius Spieth. I teach art history in the School of Art of Louisiana State University. Here I cover a number of subjects ranging from the 18th century, 19th century, to 20th century and 21st century art. I also teach in the Honors College on campus. Most students at LSU will know me, however, because of an introductory level class that I teach, which is Art 1001, currently enrolling 2,800 students. Many of the incoming students every semester take this class. And I'm very happy that it enjoys this level of popularity on campus. One of my areas of research is art markets. I have a PhD in art history and in addition to that an MBA degree in finance which I earned in Japan and I took this expertise in order to investigate art markets and also came to art from the perspective of a collector. I've been a passionate collector ever since I was 14. I'm very passionate about the subject. It's also one of the things that drive me in my life and I always tell people first day of class it's the first thing that I think about in the morning when I get up and it's the last thing that I think about at night when I go to bed. I don't expect all of my students to have the same commitment but I'd like to inspire them with the enthusiasm that comes from this kind of activity. So thank you very much and I hope to see you soon in one of my classes. Hi, I'm Julie Elliott, and I teach interior design at LSU. Our goal this semester was to take 17 students and really have them look at it from the lens of these individual homeowner partners for Habitat for Humanity who do have different profiles. And so the goal was to have some kind of commonality be identified out of these 17 projects. And so even though the floor plates were designed differently for all 17, they have a lot of commonalities. And that's where we're working now with Habitat to see if we could influence potentially the next iteration of homes that will be built. The project started off with a site visit to a traditional Habitat for Humanity house here in Baton Rouge. And then from there, we all got client profiles and our clients ranged in age, race, gender, kind of all of the above. And from there, we thought we could kind of develop a floor plan more based on our clients' needs and also universal needs. So that means it could fit really anyone and everyone, no matter your age, gender, disability. My client specifically was a family of five, and this family had a five-year-old boy with autism. In order to design for a child with autism, it was important that I included things such as soft surfaces, 
colors were super important and also rounded corners amongst a bunch of other things. Another thing that was super important in this project was to do an ADA bathroom so it's completely accessible to anybody who would live in this home in the future. Each person in our studio was given a specific client and we were given the same floor plan but we wanted to reimagine the space for universal design which would accommodate any race, religion, disability. My name is Annalise Bellinger. I'm a junior studying interior design at LSU. My clients were a family, a mother and two of her sons that immigrated from Africa. So they're here working in Louisiana and the mother works at a nursing home. So my main goal was to just make a universal design that met all of their needs and not only their needs like in the current moment, but also like for whenever like they grow up and the kids get older and that they have like a space that like they can live in through all like, stages of their life. It was very eye-opening to see all of the different um, necessities and things that people need, but everyone has different requirements, you know, different disabilities and things like that that need to be accommodated for. It was awesome. It was such a great experience to actually go out there and see some of the families. And we worked with so many different people who just want to help their community. And at the same time, the students got to meet some of the homeowners, physically build one of the houses, and on that same day, we just happened to have one of the homeowner profiles that we had worked with have their home right across the street dedicated to them. And so I just saw this excitement in the students' eyes, you know, it just all came to life in full circle. I'm Haley Blakeman. I'm assistant professor at the School of Landscape Architecture at LSU. Landscape architecture is really important because we make our communities more resilient. We bring people together. We create beautiful, functional places for people. So landscape architectures, system thinkers, problem solvers, conveners. I teach our third year students planting design, our fourth year students large scale planning, and our fifth year students research method, which is capstone prep and then capstone. And I really enjoy the research methods and capstone prep series because the students get to define the problems in their projects that they're interested in and then I help them work through how to research that and design it. Landscape architects strive to achieve a balance between the built environment and the natural environment. We shape the land outside of buildings. We create places that bring people together and enhance natural environments. Mm -hmm.